Now we'll see some gate problems related to these Turing machines and you know decidability. So four statements are given. We have to find out which of the following are undecidable, right? So first one is language of NFA1 intersection language of NFT2. So though NFAs are given, we can uh, construct DFAs first, DFA, DFA. After that, apply product automata, you get one more uh, DFA. That DFA accepts emptiness or not is a question. Already we have a algorithm for that. That's why one is decidable. So given a context-free grammar, whether X string, uh, a particular X string belongs to that language or not, CYK algorithm. So decidable, these two are decidable. Now given context-free grammars, to uh, CFGs, whether that grammars generate same language or not is undecidable, you know that. So three is undecidable. Fourth one, given a Turing machine, that means given RE set, whether the language accepted by the Turing machine, that means that RE set is empty or not. So it is because of, you know, this property, did you remember Rice theorem? Rice theorem's trivial property and non-trivial properties, did you remember? Yes. So every non-trivial property of uh, RE set is undecidable right so that's why this is not decidable so three and four are not decidable the correct answer is c okay now we'll see one more problem l equal to collection of strings in the form of a power some number where that number is prime number example a square a power 3 a power 5 okay so a number of a should be prime number such strings will be collected it forms a language and we know that that language is neither regular nor context free correct we have already studied that so option b is wrong option c is wrong because option p says that it is regular option c says that it is context free both are wrong now we have only two options it is not accepted by turing machine that means this is non re language this statement says that it is re correct it is neither regular nor context free but accepted by turing machine that means this statement says that it is re finally the question is reduced to whether we have a turing machine or not yes we have a turing machine for this problem remember one thing so just sometimes what happens you know it will be very difficult for you to understand when we can have turing machine for that i will give you one rough idea whenever you have an algorithm whenever you can solve a problem using your computer then definitely you can solve it by Turing machine because Turing machines are equivalent to your computer model. Example, using your computer, if you can solve any mathematical problem, definitely you can write a Turing machine also. So given a pattern, otherwise given a number 27, whether it is prime or not, let's say it's a your question, can you write a program and decide it? Yes, definitely we can write a program and that program always can detect whether a given number is prime number or not, right? Simply do factorization. That is one easy idea, correct? So find out the factors, divide that number by two, three, your Turing machine also can do division, right? So think about it. So definitely we can, at this moment, I will tell you one idea. Definitely we can write a program. Definitely using computer we can solve it. So using Turing machine also we can solve. Now think about the idea. The rough idea will be like this. Finally what you should do is example let's say input is a power 53 something. Then take this 53 that means your Turing machine is going to have input as number of years let's say 53. Then try to divide that number of years by 2 by 3. Try to cancel this one. So if you can divide it by, you know, at least, uh, sorry, exactly two numbers, exactly two numbers. Okay, then definitely it is prime number. If you cannot, if you have more factors or only one factor, definitely it is not prime in that way. Always we can detect, not a problem. So you don't really require to go to loop, right? Do we really require in this process to go to infinite loop? No, that's why, yes, there is a Turing machine. It is not accepted by, sorry, wrong. It is accepted by Turing machine and especially this is context sensitive language, a power prime. Okay, of course, that's the result. You don't re really require to know the reason why it is context sensitive because they are a little bit quite, uh, uh, they are a little bit complex to understand. So at this moment, don't worry about them. So the question is about that's why whether there is a Turing machine or not. Yes, there is a Turing machine because we have a mathematical algorithm to solve this problem, right? We'll see one more problem. L equal to 0 plus 1 whole star if P equal to NP. Otherwise, empty set. Okay. Now, sir, what is P and NP? Actually, they are removed from the syllabus. We used to have 
P and NP concept. I will just give definition of P and NP. P is a problem in algorithms. A problem is called a decision problem is called P problem. If there is a uh, you know polynomial time algorithm, that means if you can solve that problem in polynomial time. Okay, polynomial time means n n log n n square. That means less than or equal to some n power k time. Example sorting. We can do in n log n time. That means we can do with uh, less than or equal to n square time, right? That's why it's a polynomial time algorithm. Similarly, there are a lot of algorithms in the world. They are polynomial. But there are some algorithms which are exponential. So, at this moment, there is no algorithm to solve it in polynomial time. Such algorithms are called exponential. But we don't know whether we can solve them in polynomial or not. So, what is NP problem is? A problem is called NP problem. If that problem can be verifiable in polynomial time. It will be complex to understand in 5 minutes. Okay, that's fine. I'm just giving the definitions. So, polynomial algorithm, P problem is nothing but generally easy problem. That means there is an easy solution. That means, so computationally it is easy. That means we have an algorithm to solve it in a polynomial time. That means within n square n cube time. NP problem is nothing but we can verify it in polynomial time. That means we are not solving it, but if someone gives a solution, then we can verify it whether the solution is correct or not in polynomial time. Example, you have a sorting problem 1, 5, 2, 3, 7. So, it is P problem first of all because we can solve this in uh, polynomial time like n square n cube. Any algorithm which takes n cube n power 4, any n power k that is called polynomial. Now this problem, sorting problem is verifiable in polynomial time. That means what is the sorting problem? We have to sort it, right? Let's say someone already sorted the problem. That means you have already solution. The question whether it is a right solution or not, we have to check. So given solution is sorted or not is the question. You should not sort it, but we have to verify it. So verifying is very easy. Every element should be greater than the next element. Every element should be smaller than the next element or equal, correct? In that way, they should be in ascending order. That's not a big deal to check, right? So that's why this sorting algorithm, sorry, sorting problem is verifiable in polynomial time. In that way, there are some problems verifiable in polynomial time. They are called NP. But the thing is, let's say these are all class of problems which are solvable in polynomial time. Okay, these are all problems which are solvable in polynomial time. There are some problems which are verifiable in polynomial time. This is NP. So, these two are sets. P is a set of problems which are solvable in polynomial time. NP is set of problems which are verifiable in polynomial time. Now, one open question in the world at this moment is, is this set of problems P equal to set of NP problems? There are some problems which are both P and NP. But what is open question is, is it true that every P problem is NP and is it true that every NP problem is P? That means set of problems in P and set of problems in NP exactly same or not is an open question. There is no proof that they are different. There is no proof that they are same at this moment. Okay. So, the question is now. Whether the language is 0 plus 1 whole star or empty, we don't know. Because P equal to NP is undecidable problem, otherwise open question. We don't know. When you don't know whether P equal to NP or not, how you solve it? So, the trick is whether, assume that let's say case number 1. Because we don't know that whether it is case number 1 or case number 2. Let's case number 1 is true, let's say. If really P equal to NP, assume. Then, language will become 0 plus 1 whole star. 0 plus 1 whole star is regular. Every regular language is context free. Every regular is recursive. Every regular is recursively enumerable. Already you know that circuit, correct? When you have a finite automata, so we can design a Turing machine also because Turing machine solves bigger problem than finite automata. Whatever a finite automata does, your Turing machine can do. Yes or no? Yes. So that's why every regular language is recursive and recursively enumerable also. Remember it. Now, what if case number one is wrong? Really, let's say P not equal to NP after some time. In the future, someone decides that P not equal to NP. Then your language will become empty. Still, that is regular language. So, the trick here is whether it is solvable or not doesn't matter. Whatever happens in the future, whether P equal to NP or P not equal to NP, language is regular always. Remember it. So, it is going to be regular. Using that, you answer it. L is recursive. Every regular language is recursive. A is correct. Now, option B, L is recursively enumerable, correct, but not recursive. It's recursive also, wrong. 
So L is not recalls enumerable. It is regular means RE also wrong. So already A is correct. That's why automatically these are all will become wrong. Whether L is recursively enumerable or not will be known after we find out T equal to NP. Unnecessary. We don't really require. Okay. So I will give you one analogy. Today uh, Raju is going to you know eat biryani. If God exists. God exists. If there is a proof that God exists. If God doesn't exist. What he is going to do is, he is going to eat biryani. Oh, that means in any case he is eating biryani, right? Then now the question, God exists or not, we don't know. But whether Raju eats biryani or not, definitely he eats. Because whether God exists, then he eats biryani. God doesn't exist, also he eats biryani. So overall, can we say that he eats definitely biryani? Yes. That same thing, here also this language is regular, hence it is recursive. So option A is the right answer, okay? Now we will see one more problem. Given a Turing machine and state Q and input W, whether does the computation of M on W visit the state Q or not? That means if you run this input on that machine, eventually that machine goes to the state Q or not is a question. For that what we do is, we try to answer this question by first of all eliminating some options. If you see option D, X is not a decision problem. Actually, it is a decision problem. Decision problem is a problem for which uh, if you give the input, then outputs are yes, otherwise no, right? This question is about yes or no, right? If you ask this question someone, then answer supposed to be yes, otherwise no, right? So, there are only yes or no instances. That's why we say that this is a decision problem. But option D says that it is not a decision problem. So, option D is wrong. Now, we have three choices, A, B, C. But what is partially decidable? D means decidable, uh, U means undecidable, D means, uh, sorry, partially decidable means there is a Turing machine which accepts a problem, okay. For this problem, if you can design a Turing machine, then we say that it is partially decidable. I can prove that this is partially decidable. How do you say? Here, what is a pro language? Generally, we design a Turing machine for language, right? What is a language? I am seeing only problem. Here this problem is a language. What is the language form? I will tell you. Here the language is collection of Turing machines and inputs W's and Q's. Okay. So it is a pattern MWQ such a way that M on W visit the state Q. Visit state Q. So this is the language form. Okay. So here this is a problem form I can say for that problem it is a language form. What is that collection of M W Q patterns whenever this M is treated as Turing machine code and W is treated as input and Q is treated as state. If M visits state Q on W then we collect that M W Q into a bag. So that bag forms a language. Okay. Now for that language we have to design Turing machine. Yes, we can design a Turing machine. If you can design a Turing machine for this language, we say that that is partially decidable, otherwise semi-decidable. I will show that Turing machine, you see. What I do is, I have to accept this kind of patterns, M, W, Q. Whenever really M on input W goes to state Q, right? So, it is very easy to accept this kind of patterns. What I do is, first of all, I am designing my Turing machine. Take your M into one tape, W into another tape, Q into another tape, just for you know convenience that's it. You can use one tape also. So now simulate this M on W. So when you are simulating M on W each and every step, eventually let's say if M goes to state Q, then you close your problem and say accept. Try to understand the description of my Turing machine, this Turing machine. Let's call it as N. So I am explaining you what I am doing while constructing this Turing machine or you know I am just showing you the design of Turing machine N. Simply take input M W Q and simulate M on W. If M visits Q on any I mean at any time then go to accept state. That is it. Now you tell me really M given input M W Q if really M accepts uh, sorry M on W goes to state Q definitely you are accepting correct. That means you are accepting the strings in the language. 
right so that's why there is a turing machine but the question here is do we have total turing machine or not what is total turing machine for that wrong input should be rejected always such total turing machine is not possible i will tell you why at this moment you remember this problem is partially decidable why this problem doesn't have total turing machine why this problem is undecidable both are same so why it is undecidable i will tell you so example real it is decidable i am using proof by contradiction let's say this problem is decidable then on input m what is the problem there should be if real it is decidable then you should have a total turing machine for this language what is the language given m comma w comma you know what is that another thing q your total turing machine should say yes and no that means really m on input w goes to state q you should be able to tell yes if m on w if it doesn't go to state q you should be able to tell that no right such a total turing machine does not exist why sir let's say it exists then i can solve membership problem recall so this is a membership problem what is that whether given a turing machine m given turing machine m accepts w or not for that do we have total turing machine no but we can construct it how whenever you want to know whether m accepts w or not first give such m comma w here but sir what about q i will tell you so what you do here is input will be created like this m and w for which you want to check the membership thing that means whether m accepts w or not and in the place of q give final state t we know that in our turing machines t is the final state if m on w and t if this input is given assume that let's say this total turing machine definitely should go to final state otherwise reject state assume that let's say it go it went to final state if it went to final state then definitely i know one thing what is that what is the meaning of that really m on w on t if it goes to final state that means this turing machine m on input w is visiting final state whenever this um, turing machine on w visits final state that means this m accepts w then i can say that the given turing machine m accepts w now second case what if this total turing machine says no that means at any time this turing machine m on input w is not going to final state if this turing machine on input w is not going to final state then m is not accepting w then m accepts w i can say no in that way whether a given turing machine accepts w for this problem always i can answer using this total turing machine but we know that m accepts w or not further there is no total turing machine but why you are how you are able to construct using this one if this total turing machine exists then i can construct a total turing machine here correct using s and no answers here i can also tell here s and no answers so that is only possible if there is a total turing machine but already we know that there is no total turing machine here then there should not be total turing machine here so finally this problem is undecidable what is that given a turing machine m on input w goes to let's say state q or not for that problem there is no uh, total turing machine that means it is undecidable problem so finally does the computation of m on w visit the state q is undecidable because if it becomes decidable this ad, uh, membership problem will become decidable but already we know that that is not decidable then this should not be decidable that's it now if you see the options x is decidable no x is undecidable yes but partially decidable yes there is a total turing sorry there is a turing machine for that that's why it is correct b is the right answer so here not even partially decidable is wrong right in that way we can easily answer this question